Okay, let's go ahead and evaluate the expression. So in algebra, things like this we call an expression. So notice this has no equation symbol. So if I had uh, like equals nine here, this would be an algebraic equation. But this is just a bunch of stuff all by itself. Uh, so we have some numbers, some variables together. So we are expressing something. So uh, this is what this is called. And this word here, evaluate, means that we're going to go ahead and assign some numbers to these variables. And you're going to plug in these values in their respective variables and simplify this using the order of operations. Now, a lot of you probably are saying to yourself, oh, this looks pretty easy. I definitely can do this. But I'm going to tell you right now, anytime you are doing a bunch of number crunching, especially when you're using the order of operations, you need to be focused as it's easy to make a mistake. And I'm almost going to guarantee you that some of you out there are going to do this problem with a lot of confidence, and you're going to be shocked when you see the answer, okay? You very well could get this wrong. Hopefully, that's not you. But if you know how to do this problem, go to put your answer into the comment section. I'm going to show you the correct solution here in just one moment. And, of course, I'm going to go through step-by-step uh, -step exactly how we do this problem. But uh, first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of TC Math Academy. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I've been teaching math for decades. It is my true passion. And I'm here to tell you that you can be successful in mathematics. And I'm especially speaking to those of you that struggle in math. If you failed a couple math courses in the past, who cares? The past doesn't equal the future. And, um, you know, if you struggle to math, that's really no indication in, in terms of your potential or ability to learn math. I know that might sound crazy. You're saying, what are you talking about? I failed before. Well, listen, I'm telling you right now, I've seen it time and time and time again. If you have the desire to learn math and you have a lot of encouragement and most importantly, great math instruction, math instruction that you actually understand that's comprehensive, then you can do this stuff. All right. So if you need help in your current math course, or maybe, uh, maybe some sort of special test that you're studying for that has math on it. I'm talking about things like the GED, SAT, ACT, ASVAB, teacher certification exam, maybe a nursing school entrance exam. Or if you're homeschooling mathematics, check out my math help program. I'm going to leave a link to it in the description of this video. I literally have over 100 plus different math courses that span these categories and much, much more. I'm also going to leave links to my uh, notes in the description as well because you need something to study from, okay? You just certainly just can't learn math by watching and hoping that you're going to memorize all this stuff in your brain. You have to take notes, okay? So if you don't have a great pair of math notes, you can use mine, but get better at note-taking and things will get better for you in math. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the answer right now. So here you go. So we have uh, parentheses 4x, 4xy plus y minus 8x and parentheses divided by xy. Uh, and of course, these variables are as x is equal to 1, y is equal to negative 2. When we evaluate this expression for these variables, this is the answer 36. Okay, so how did you do? Did you get this right? Well, if you got this right, I must go ahead and give you a nice little happy face and a plus, a 100% and a few stars so you can celebrate your awesomeness in math. So uh, listen, that's a great job right now. If you are shocked, if you're like, oh my goodness, uh, maybe some of you have this expression, uh, you might be kind of like angry or like saying, all right, Mr. YouTube Math Man, you did something wrong, not me. I'm convinced that my answer is right. Well, listen, I like the confidence, but let's go through this step by step because you might be surprised if you made an error, okay, or where you made an error. And I have an idea. If you didn't get this answer right and you're confident about it, I think I know where you may have made a mistake. So let's go ahead and get into this right now. Okay, so when we're evaluating any expression in mathematics and algebra, and we have variables assigned. So here we have x is equal to 1 and y is equal to negative 2. Of course, I'm using these nice, lovely colors to kind of set this off. But what you need to do is replace these variables. So let's say, for example, x is 1, right? We're going to replace all the x's here with 1. And then here, the y is negative 2. So we're going to replace all these y's with negative 2. Now, here is a big, big thing um, that you need to remember when you're evaluating expressions or working with functions, okay? Anytime you're replacing a variable 
with a value. I need uh, you to do one thing. Always, always, always uh, use parentheses, okay? Just don't plug in like a one right here, like, oh, this is four times one, uh, y is negative two. If you're working like this, this is a no-no, okay? Don't do that because you can make a lot of errors. So always use parentheses, and this will reduce a lot of errors that you can make, okay? So let's go ahead and do this now. And when you um, are plugging in values, you have to focus, okay? Because, well, no, let me just go ahead and show you first. So we have 4xy, so I'm going to replace the x with 1. So here it's going to be parenthesis, 4 times 1, and then y is negative 2, so I'm plugging in negative 2, plus this y is going to be negative 2, right? And then I have minus 8 times x, and then x is 1, divided by x, y, of course, x is 1, and y is negative 2. And notice I'm using parentheses, but here is what I want you to do. After you plug in your values, stop and pause. Kind of like appreciate the work you've done, you know, like, you know, uh, celebrate it. Like, oh my goodness, look at I plugged everything in so nicely because here's the deal. I've seen this like a million times, maybe not a million times, maybe 753,000 times over my decades of teaching is where students will uh, plug in these values into what they're trying to, ex uh, you know, this expression. They'll, they'll plug in the uh, values, but they actually plugged in the wrong values or they made a little mistake. Instead of like a one here, they may, may have put in a negative two. And then here's the crazy part about it. All this work right here uh, that they'll do with this wrong value plugged in is perfect. Okay, so they actually did a great job, but they end up solving the wrong problem because they plugged in the wrong values. Do not do that. So when you plug in your values into your expression, take a deep breath and just look at everything and, and make sure you plugged everything in correctly. Okay, if you're satisfied with that, then take the next step, which is, of course, to start simplifying this. And um, when we uh, look at this, what are we dealing with here? Well, this is multiplication. Now we have addition. This is subtraction. Here's division. This is multiplication. So anytime we have a bunch of operations and with parentheses, of course, you need to keep PEMDAS in mind, which is the order of operations, right? Now, if you're not quite confident with the order of operations, then this problem right here, uh, could, you can get in trouble with it. So you need to review uh, the order of operations, PEMDAS. This is parentheses. E is exponents or powers. Here is multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction. This is actually one kind of group. This is a second group, and it's what we see from left to right. I'm going to talk about uh, that uh, a little bit more um, in a second, but hopefully you understand the order of operations. So here we have parentheses. So let's go ahead and focus on what to do inside the parentheses. And when we look in here, I have addition, subtraction, but this is multiplication. So let's go ahead and work on multiplication first, as that is... Uh, kind of higher up on the scale of things, uh, our to-do list versus um, addition and subtraction in terms of the order of operations. So let's go ahead and handle this one step at a time. Now, I know it's tempting to do a bunch of things at once. Um, I don't recommend that, okay? At most, you can maybe take two steps. Uh, that's not even really recommended. So just write your work out one step at a time. Don't try to be a hero and be like, okay, here is the work and here is the answer because your student won't, I mean, your teacher won't know uh, what, you know, you can't, you have to kind of like prove each step that you understand what's going on, okay? Plus, you're not gonna be able to check your work if you just go from here to the answer, right? So never do that. Just go ahead and do things one step at a time. All right, so here we have 4 times 1 times negative 2. This is going to be negative 8. Okay, so if you don't know why that is, go ahead and review positive and negative numbers. But this is negative 8, so we have negative 8 plus a negative 2 minus 8 times 1. And then, of course, we're still focused on working inside these parentheses. All right, let's go ahead and take the next step here. Okay, so... Here we had a negative 8 plus negative 2. Now, there's nothing inside here, these parentheses. It's just when you plug in these values. So really, technically, you could drop the, uh, these parentheses at this point. But here we do have multiplication, 8 times 1. Now, we know that's just simply going to be 8, but it is multiplication because it's, if this was a different number, you would have to address this, you know, uh, like in the first step. So let's just go ahead and write uh, an 8 as a result of this product, 8 times 1. Okay, now at this point as well, uh, you know, we still want to get one value down here. We're still working inside our parentheses. So even though it's easy to say, okay, one times negative two right here, 
you know, there is no parentheses here. Okay, there's parentheses here. So we have to strictly follow the order of operations. Okay, we have to be patient and work with our parentheses first. Okay, so you'll see why this uh, makes a difference here in a moment. Okay, let's continue to work with the parentheses because we're not done. All right, so here we have negative 8. This is negative 8 plus negative 2. And this negative 8 right here, we really can write as plus a negative 8. All right, so we have negative 2 minus 8, actually. I'm not sure what I said, but right here we have negative 8 plus negative 2 minus 8. But this minus 8 is really a plus negative 8. I think it's better to just write that out explicitly so you're not confused. So now I can go ahead and add these up. I have negative 8 and negative 8 plus a negative 2. So we have 16 and 2. That's negative 18. And now we are done. Okay, so we're done with this part of the problem. So we're down to negative 18 divided by 1 times 2. Okay, now right here, this is where a lot of a lot of you can make a mistake. There's another way we can kind of write this here. I could say negative 18 divided by 1 times negative 2. Right, if I just drop the parentheses, this is another way we can write this. Now, when we look at PEMDAS. All right, this is where a lot of you may have made an error. Uh, this is, a, I tell you, this is so confused uh, by so many students. So let's go ahead and clear, uh, clear this up right now. A lot of you think, look at PEMDAS, P-E-M-D-S, this part right here, M and D and A and S, you may think that you always, always, always have to do all multiplication before division. That's not the case, okay? What you're gonna do is multiplication or division whatever comes first from left to right. You have to look from left to right. If multiplication comes first and then division, then you're gonna do multiplication and then division. But if division comes first and then there's multiplication, you're gonna do division first, okay? So right here, when I'm looking at this problem, I have division first, all right? So if you did the multiplication first, you're gonna end up with a different answer, okay? You'll end up with 18, uh, negative 18 divided by a negative two. All right, so if you got, let's say, a positive 9 as your answer, this is why uh, you made that mistake. You actually multiplied first, okay? You got to divide. So that's a little subtle point here, and it's easy to make this mistake. So, you know, again, the order of operations, most people, I think, uh, think they know this uh, better than they actually do. So right here, we have to do division. Negative 18 divided by a negative 1 is simply going to be what? Negative 18. Okay, that's all that's going to be. So the result of that is negative 18. And now we have to multiply by 2. So negative 18 times a negative 2 is a positive 36. Negative times negative is a positive. Okay, now we could see that a little bit more explicitly right here. Okay, let's kind of do that work right here. Maybe these parentheses are throwing you off. But if I'm like, okay, negative 18 divided by uh, 1, I would do this first, right? I'm going to do division before multiplication because it becomes first from left to right. So right here, uh, the result of doing negative 18 divided by 1 is negative 18. Now I have negative 18 times this negative 2, which, of course, is a positive 36. Okay, but if you ended up with, let's see the, um, uh, the mistake again. If you're like, oh, I got to do multiplication before division, and you're like negative 18 divided by a negative 2, so my answer is a positive 9. I am so confident I got that right. Well, listen, if you showed all your work and you only made an error on that part of the problem and you gave me like a 9, and let's say this point, this question was worth 10 points, I could maybe give you like an 8 out of 10, okay? Now, why would I give you an 8 out of 10? Because you showed a lot of work and you made an error here, which is a pretty common error in a order of operations. But this is pretty good still, right? You got a lot of points. You're not going to get a zero out of 10. If you just like show me your answer and it's wrong, okay, that's not going to help you out, right? But you know, this works if you're taking a written test or quiz, all right? That's why you got to show your work. But if you're doing like a multiple choice test, I could tell you right now, almost guarantee you because I've designed so many tests, guess what? Yeah, let's say have A, B, C, D. Absolutely, here is going to be your choices, right? Nine would be there, 36, and then some other crazy things, negative zero, or maybe none of the above. But I can guarantee you, you're going to see your answer, okay? 
the wrong answer because math teachers know the common mistakes. And they're going to go ahead and just reward you. They're going to be like, listen, we know that students confuse this, and they'll put in your nice, lovely answer. So when you're taking multiple choice tests, uh, I'm sure all of us can relate to this, you're taking a test, a test and you're like, oh, I see my answer. I see my answer. I must be so smart. Uh, so you select your answer and then, you know, you're like, wow, I saw all my answers on this multiple choice test. And then you end up getting like a 70 out of 100, you know, and you're like, what happened? Well, because, you know, uh, these test uh, makers know the common errors. So the only way you can get better at math is by practicing and knowing you know, uh, these little common pitfalls. But it's certainly okay if you if you made an error here. I'm glad you did because now you won't make that error in the future, okay? And hopefully this little video helped you out. And if that is the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you need help with this, this is kind of like basic algebra stuff. Uh, let me go ahead and recommend, uh, recommend a couple courses, probably like my pre-algebra or algebra one course. I also have additional videos on my YouTube channel on how to evaluate expressions. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.